Hi, in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to record customer deposits in three steps, or is it four steps? Let's just get to QuickBooks Online. So here we are in QuickBooks Online, and there's a couple things that we need to do in order to prepare to record our customer deposits. So the first thing is let's go to the gear icon, account and settings. And under the sales section, we want to toggle the deposits feature. You want to make sure that it's turned on by clicking on the pencil and then make sure that it's uh, turned on by default. I believe it's turned off. So let's turn that on. And another thing we want to make sure that is on is our progress billing because when we invoice our clients based on an estimate, um, then we can go ahead and bill them based on a progress showing that we already received our deposit. So after you've done that, go ahead and click done. Now you're ready to record your deposit. So the second thing we want to do is record our deposit by going to new bank deposit. And let's record the deposit we received from our cool cars client for um, material that goes towards the estimate or the contract that we got. So cool cars. And we're going to um, select customer deposits. You want to make sure you have this account customer deposits under other current liabilities type section. And we're going to put for materials. You can put any description here. And then the type of payment you received. And the amount. And we're going to save and close that. Now, if we go into our balance sheet, uh, let me refresh this. And we go into our customer section or customer deposit account, we will be able to see that deposit in there. Now, do recall that deposits are not um, earned revenue yet. Not until you have done some of the work, um, you can go ahead and remove the deposit from this account balance. This account balance is just a register, a running balance of your deposits. As you can see, I have another uh, deposit here that's pending removal. So let's go ahead and um, go to the third step of invoicing our client for progress work we've done and also including this $500 deposit in that um, that invoice. So let's close out of here. Let's go into our customer, cool cars. And let's go ahead and do an invoice towards this estimate of 2,500. I'm going to do custom amount and, oh, no, I don't want to leave yet. I want to do a progress payment of um, $1,000. Or you know what we could do? We could do 2,000, whatever the contract is. But out of these 2,000, we're going to apply um, the deposit of $500 that we received because we want to let them know that they already paid 500 out of the $2,500 they owe us. Now, when you enter an amount here, notice over here on this area of the invoice what happens. Oh, let me scroll back up. There is a payment uh, method section here. So let me try that again. If I delete this, let's see if you could see it up here. If I delete the 500, it will disappear. There's nothing there. But when we enter an amount, it comes back, a payment method. Now you're going to ask yourself, why am I getting this when I already recorded the deposit? Well, QuickBooks initially, um, would like for you to record the deposit when you do an invoice. But sometimes that does not happen. Sometimes we are in a rush, we just receive the check, we put it in the bank, and then we invoice our client. Um, most of the time that's what happens. But if that does not happen to you and you take your time and you're going to invoice the client, um, then you can record the payment here. It was a check. One, two, three, four for 500. 
and the deposit would be it's your checking account because that's where you're going to deposit to and then you can write instead of 200 uh 2000 you can write what the actual deposit was so as you could see they don't owe you anything because you're just invoicing the deposit and this is going to show as a progress payment but because we already recorded the deposit we're going to do something different here i'm going to go back and i'm going to do 2000 here it's a progress payment and under the deposit i'm going to put undeposited funds so i'm billing 2000 i received 500 dollars as deposit they owe me 1500 and then i'm going to save and close the next step is going into a bank deposit and you're going to reselect that deposit. Now this deposit right here, it's coming from the invoice. Okay, QuickBooks is saying that you got a $500 deposit and it put it into undeposited funds, but we already recorded the deposit. So what we wanna do is again, go down here, go under customer deposit and we're going to reverse that $500 um, that we received. And I'm gonna put earned income of deposit. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it as a negative 500, okay? So we have 500 up here, and we have negative 500 here, and it's going to be today's date, but usually, if you bill after your deposit, this is probably a different date. I just left it as today's date. And let's save and close. And let's take a look at the balance sheet and see what happened. Let's just refresh here. Because we want to understand what QuickBooks is doing behind the scenes. It's so important. So as you can see, our customer deposit balance is now only a thousand. And uh, QuickBooks has recorded that we've earned already this deposit for materials we already earned it so we're subtracting it or we're taking it away from a uh, customer deposit because it's no longer there and uh, let me close this and the customer only owes us 1500 so it looks like everything is being recorded correctly how it should be recorded in quickbooks and those are the three steps or four steps for your customer deposits into QuickBooks. I hope that this video has helped you. Please don't forget to subscribe for more how-tos, tips and tricks, and troubleshooting for QuickBooks. I will see you in the next one.